North Korea then released a statement threatening to, quote, reduce the U.S. mainland into a field of nuclear war at the slightest sign of a preemptive strike. With us now, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, who is a pilot in the Air National Guard. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, what uh, is your reaction to President Trump's uh, continued war of words with North Korea? So initially, I, I don't have a problem with the president stepping up his rhetoric. I, I wouldn't have said fire and fury, you know, that I, I would not have done what he did in terms of those exact words. But I think increased rhetoric after 25 years of diplomatic talk, that got us a basically nuclear North Korea. Where my issue is right now is this is a, mo this is a serious moment. And, you know, I was at, at an event yesterday and I was talking to a couple that literally, I'm not even joking, they canceled their trip to Hawaii because they're afraid they're going to get nuked by North Korea. This is a moment where the president needs to be very serious, yeah, it's sometimes tough, be, be very serious to outlay the issue that's going on with North Korea, where they are, why it's in America's interest. I think an Oval Office address would actually be very beneficial and say, look, you don't have to lose sleep at night because we can defend ourselves against this. But the problem is not where we are today. It's where we could be in six months or a year. And the, the process of the past of acting like the Chinese are just going to miraculously step up isn't going to happen. So the words, again, the words I don't take huge issue with, uh, although I wouldn't have used fire and fury and things like that, but my problem is I wish the president, instead of going after McConnell and whatever the, the ball is of the day, the shiny red ball, stick to this one message and unite the American people. Well, Congressman, obviously we have had three presidents, three administrations that have done very little. Uh, to stop us from uh, where we are right now. So this certainly isn't a problem that uh, we can lay at the, the feet of Donald Trump. Barack Obama famously said during the transition, this is going to be the big issue that you're going to be worried about the most. At the same time, though, the inflammatory rhetoric is not helpful. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering, what do you say to your constituents when they ask you uh, what the best way forward is in North Korea? Well, I say we have to prepare for two things, for three things. Number one, we have to, we really have to step up pressure against China. We have to change their calculus that having a quote buffer state on their border is actually more of an anchor uh, than uh, than than you know actually going after North Korea, actually putting pressure on them. Number two, we have to boost our missile defense capability against ICBMs, especially intercontinental ballistic missiles. Short and medium range is pretty good. We always need to have better at that, uh, as well as boost phase intercept. And third is we have to have a credible military option and it it stinks to hear it nobody likes to hear this because we know that a military option would lead to a lot of bloodshed but when you now have a situation where Kim Jong-un is saying he's gonna fire four missiles at Guam we know they have the ability to miniaturize nuclear uh, nuclear warheads and put them on these missiles and ICBMs it gets to a point where you almost have to assume they're nuclear because we have no idea until they strike so I think strong Preparation for those three fronts can make war less likely, but we have to remember a nuclear North Korea that threatens us and our allies is the doomsday scenario that we can't allow to happen. Uh, what, what would the human cost be of a war with North Korea? It'd be high. It'd be massive. Um, you know, we've war basically up until the last 25 years have had, and even so in the last 25 years, but with technology has changed it a little bit, has had massive human tolls. War is something that we always try to avoid. They write poems about how horrific war actually is compared to what people think going in. But what's even more horrific, unfortunately, is a North Korea with a nuclear weapon, frankly, that could be willing to use it, and then giving permission thereby to regimes like Iran and any other country, South Korea, Japan, that says, you've given de facto North Korea the ability to have a nuclear weapon, you're going to also give us that ability. And, and this is really a, I'm not trying to overly frighten people because I think that's counterproductive and I don't think people need to live their lives in their basement, but it's also a reality right. that we have to confront this head on. Well, and unfortunately, another reality is nuclear proliferation, where you could actually have the North Koreans with the nuclear technology selling it to ISIS, selling it to other enemies. So uh, the, the attack in the United States doesn't come to the West Coast. Perhaps it, it comes somewhere else there. And uh, it is, it's an extraordinarily dangerous situation we're in. It's been building since the early 1990s. Uh, Congressman, how much do you blame China? Here's a country that... Um, 
you know, 85% of the exports uh, that uh, North Korea puts, uh, puts out goes to China. 85% of the imports come from China. Uh, North Korea is really like a 51st state. Shouldn't we stop treating these two countries as if they are two separate entities? North Korea exists because China wants North Korea in its current yeah. state to exist. Is that not the case? 100%. You couldn't have said it better. The, the fact the Chinese have this calculus. You know, somehow if there's a unified Korean peninsula that's oriented towards the West, that we're going to use that as a launching pad to invade a country with over a billion people and a strong military and nuclear weapons. It's, it's asinine and it's insane. However, that's their calculus. And that's why I think some of the tough talk from the White House is not just focused on Kim Jong-un. It's also fo focused on showing the Chinese that we're serious and a war or a preemptive strike would massively be against their interests. So we're trying to change that calculus because the Chinese have millions of troops, they can shut down the border with North Korea, say you're not getting one more good from through our border, and it would put, it, the human tragedy would be terrible in North Korea, but North Korea is a human tragedy, and this might actually compel and take away the financial ability of the North Koreans to build their weapons. It, it is a human tragedy right now, and China's argument that they somehow fear a mass exodus of North Koreans coming in to their country is ridiculous. They could stop them at the border if they chose to do that. Uh, thank you so much, Congressman. Greatly appreciate you being Anytime. with us this morning.